Anime has been around for a century, but it is more popular now than ever before. Some anime have made a much larger impact than others, and have really set standards for the anime to come after. Pokemon, Dragon Ball, and One Punch Man are a few examples of memorable as well as extremely popular anime. Overlord should stand to be yet another on that long list of memorable anime for many reasons. Overlord 2 is the best season in the tripartite series and maybe the best season of any anime in the winter season of 2018. So what is Overlord 2? Overlord 2 is the second season in the series Overlord. It was first aired on January 9th, 2018 and last aired on April 3rd, 2018. Behind the season slash anime are 6 producers, 1 studio, as well as 1 licensor. Kadokawa is a very large company and is behind many popular anime. To name a few, A Place Further Than the Universe, Girls Last Tour, Kamono Friends, and most importantly, Overlord Seasons 1 to 3. The story is very good. It continues off of Overlord 1, where Momonga rules the Great Tomb of Nazu. He tries to find the powerful item that explains the cause for one of the problems in Overlord 1. The plot can be easy to follow, and overall is very well done. A negative aspect of this season, in my opinion, is that it's filled with side plots. They introduce a few new groups in the anime that have an issue that they need to resolve. It all pieces together as Nazarick interacts with them later on. This anime is meant to be a more serious type, as seen by the action, adventure, fantasy, and supernatural aspects in it. That isn't always the case, however, as it tries to sprinkle some humor in certain areas. In my personal opinion, the seriousness and humor the anime portrays don't blend well. Some of the jokes are funny though. Albedo is an overseer of the four guardians in Nazarick and she loves Momonga a lot, as seen by her attitude throughout the anime. It is the main punchline and humor that they be into the anime in almost all the 28 episodes, making it very dead. In addition, there are two other characters that love Momonga. One of them showed jealousy towards Albedo loving him, this being Shouten. This is also another punchline that they used to rattle. Thankfully, or unfortunately, depending on what you think of her, Shouten didn't have much screen time, so this wasn't an issue. Can't say the same for Season 1 and Season 3. Romance is often used in anime regardless of the genre. Season 2 reels in 5 new romances, plus 2 from Season 1. Romance in this anime is also used a lot for comedic effect and the punchline. If you were to ask me what episode of Overlord 2 was the weirdest one, I would definitely say episode 5. I won't spoil any of it for times and enjoyment's sake, but I will tell you to be prepared. Once you get past the worst of the episode, it's actually a pretty good one. It is a joke that is reused in the following season and it doesn't quite land the second time in my opinion. So a small piece of criticism of mine would be that the same kind of jokes are repeated too often and unfortunately get stale relatively quickly. Let's talk about the characters. The main character Mamonga, also known as Ayn Zalbun in the virtual world, is the leader of the Great Tomb of Nazareth. Amonga's seriousness compared to Overlord 1 has changed a lot, for the better or worse. Throughout this season, he had less thoughts about being incompetent in certain situations. This ultimately means that he's in more control of his role and is getting better at being the ruler of Nazareth than his team expects him to be. Another main character that I would like to discuss is Albedo. She is an overseer of the four guardians in Nazareth. She also loves Momonga which is clearly shown as much as a sharpie bleeds through thin paper. Her being madly in love with him isn't a reason why she is a good character, but when she is more serious is when her good parts shine. Aside from her love for Momonga, Alberto has some pretty extreme characteristics about her that make her an interesting character. She is territorial as well as completely disgusted by humans, and she has to get something done she is all business and all games. Shao Tier is a vampire and a floor guardian. She was a very important character in Overlord 1, but was only shown in a few episodes in Overlord 2. There is a reason however, but it's a pretty weak one, as seen in episode 1 of Overlord 2. She is a decent character, but she really wasn't an important one. Any of the other characters could have been the important character, as in what Shaltier did any of the other characters could have done, and they would also be in the second and third season, unlike her, so there wouldn't be anything missing without her. Demiurge is a demon and a Ford guardian. He is considered one of the cruelest members in Nazareth. He is a pretty interesting character because he always seems like he's hiding something, but always ends up helping Momonga with his goals. The final important character is Sebus, the head butler. 
He was a part of a side plot in Season 2 which tied into the main one in WoW. Unlike the rest of the team, Seba shows more compassion towards humans and thus plays an important role in his side story. Audio is an important part to making a good anime. A high quality anime usually has good audio. Overlord does have good audio, except for one rare occasion in Season 2. In the 6th episode at around the 21 minute mark, you might notice one of the antagonistic characters have his voice actor move away from his mic. The voice actors are pretty good for portraying the characters, so a pat on the back for that. The opening theme and ending theme for Overlord 2 is perfect. Go Cry Go by OXT is a really good opening. It might be the best out of the three seasons. Hydra by Myth and Royd is also pretty good. Overlord 3's ending theme is the best. Around 30 companies helped animate Overlord 2, and it really shows. The characters are textured well, especially Momonga because of his bones. Something I didn't notice while watching the anime is the 3D CG. It looks decent, but upon closer inspection, it isn't really that great. An example of this is in both Overlord 1 and 2, where the skeletons are fully CG and don't look very good as a result. The ones behind the 3D CG in Season 2 is Madbox. They have worked on CG in about 25 different anime, including some Attack on Titan content. Most of the reviews for their implementation of the CG in other animes have been criticized heavily, some suppress C be the choice for this anime. For whatever the reason may be, Overlord 1 had a different company consisting of 12 3D CG animators and one 3D CG producer work on its 3D CG but then they dropped them for Overlord 2. As for Overlord 3, it is still unknown what path they will take regarding the CG. This second to the last part of this review will be devoted to the first episode of Overlord 2 to talk about my first impressions. If you don't want to see any spoilers, skip this part to see my rating. The first 6 minutes and a half are side plots that are either going to be resolved, brought up again in season 2, or is not brought up again until possibly Overlord 3 or later. I personally don't think it's a good idea to begin the season with side plots, but it did focus on the main plot as well. First episode includes a character from the first season that is less important this time around. I'm referring to Hamusuke, and whether you like him or not, he is a giant adorable hamster. He was a pretty fun addition to the anime in Overlord 1, so it sucks that he wasn't in Overlord 2 for a lot of the time. As always, Alberto starts the season off with her displaying her love for Momonga. Jealousy is another thing that Alberto shows in this episode towards Shaltir when Momonga showed concern for her. In this season, Momonga plans to find the item used to mind control Shaltir in Overlord 1 by checking out the places in E-Ramsel. Speaking of Shaltir, she's in such a bad state that she decides to drink knowing that it could have a negative effect on her. Also in this episode, Kokutis mentions his gratitude to being in charge of Nazarek's first war, which is explained throughout the next few episodes. The ending has a new side plot that leaves us off in a cliffhanger. Most of what I said, if not everything, about the first episode was pretty critical. However, that doesn't mean I entirely hate the episode. I just don't like those specific parts about it. The voice actors and the opening and ending themes are to name a few of the things I liked about it. My first impression rating of season 2 is a 6 out of 10. To make a long review short, this is a very good season of Overlord, one of the best. The story was good, the jokes were decent, the characters were amazing, including the new additions, the audio was amazing, and the animation was good. Out of 7 trials, I gave Overlord 2 a rating of 7.57 out of 10, or 75%. Here's a list of the trials broken down. Thanks for watching my review on Overlord. Please leave constructive criticism in the comments. Thanks.